Alright guys, how's it going? This is continuing on with the terrain tutorials for Blender. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to address a couple of questions on YouTube and hopefully I can help you guys out. Now one of the users was actually having an issue with the Open Topography website. And to be honest, when you first open it, it can be a little bit daunting. So what we're going to do is, I'll show you how to use the website We'll download a height map, we'll download a texture map, we'll take this into Blender and we'll add this to a displacement map. So the first thing you're going to need to do is click on data. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see here list all data sets. Now there's three different categories, there's high resolution data sets, global and community. And the one that we want to concentrate is global data sets. And the one that we actually want to focus on is Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Now this is actually made by NASA and they have pretty damn good satellites. <laughs> so if we click on SRTM, that'll take us to the website that we need to use. And this is the one that I used in the prior tutorial. So I'm going to be a little bit facetious here and I'm going to select Glasgow. So I'll select the region. And if we scroll down, it gives us the texture coordinates that we just selected. And you can see here, data output formats. So I'm going to change this to image, and I'm going to enable generate additional color reliefs. Now this is technically the texture map. And this is when I want to address a user question. I think it was Arthur. Yep, it was. And he basically says, looks like you're using a shaded version of a height map that's not a true height map. Height maps go from black to zero to white. And technically you're right, they actually go from a value of 0 to 255, which is the RGB value. But there's one thing that you need to keep in mind when it comes to the Open Topography website. They actually use a thing called an altitude of light. And you can see here we have a 45 degree and we have 315. And this theoretically gives you a range of 270. So it kind of balances out. Now if you put this down to 0 and this up to 360, You'll get a black and white image, but it kind of screws around with the texture map. So generally I'll leave this on this. So scroll down, give it a job title, a description, enter in your email. Now this can be a dummy email, but I actually recommend you sign up to the website. It's pretty handy to be honest. So I'll do this and I'll quickly jump ahead. Now one thing I'll say is, this can take up to 2 minutes to actually download the data. It took mine 25 seconds. Depending on the size of area that you actually select, and depending on how busy the server is, millions of people use this website. So you can see what it's done. It's generated a height map and it's generated a texture map. So if you select it, let it download, right click, save as. Now I've saved this to the desktop, so let's quickly jump into Blender. And in traditional fashion, we'll delete the cube. And we'll add in a plane, so I'll press Shift and A, add in a mesh, and I'll add in a plane. Now, I'm going to show you how to use displacement with cycles. Now, you can use the Eve if you want, but it's a kind of slightly different workflow. So what I'll do here is I'll come to the scene editor and I'll change the render engine to cycles. And I'm going to change the feature set to experimental. And this lets me use adaptive subdivision when it comes to displacement. So the next thing I'll do here is I'll add in a modifier and I'll add in a subdivision surface. And you can see here we now have adaptive so I'm going to hit Adaptive, and that lets the Dyson go up. I'll quickly jump into my Shading tab, which in theory I've called the Node Editor, and I'll apply a new material to the plane. Now the first thing that we need is the image texture that we downloaded. So let's open this up in the desktop. And let's take the colour and put this into the base colour. So one thing I actually recommend is you actually square off the image. It saves a lot of messing about with doing UV mapping, but anyway. So let me put the specular down so it's not as reflective. Let me right click on this node, copy and I'll paste it in. And what I'll do here is, I'll actually change this for the displacement map that we downloaded, or the height map. I'll add in a displacement node. And I'll plug this into the height. I'll then take the displacement and I'll put that into the displacement and the material output. And we pretty much get the map that we downloaded. Now one thing we can do is, if we select the material, scroll all the way down to settings, you'll see here displacement, bump map only, we can change this to displacement and bump. And that kind of tidies things up just a little bit. And that's pretty much the basics from taking our height map and adding in a texture map to Blender. And I hope that kind of addressed your question how to use the topography website. 
Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, you know what to do. Peace.